Good morning, Impact Church. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, lalong-lalo na doon sa mga nanonood sa kanilang mga tahanan ngayon. Um, totoo po no, na nakakamiss yung presence ng bawat isa. Pero we are thankful to God na we have this uh, technology that allow us to continue our worship service every Sunday. Uh, before we sing praises to our God this morning, uh, I'll be sharing to you verses from the Bible na nagbigay ng encouragement sa akin for this week. And my prayer is that it would also give encouragement sa inyo. I'll be reading it sa Filipino po. Ito ay matatagpuan sa awit 116 verses 1 to 7. Awit 116, 1 to 7. Sabi po dito, Minamahal ko si Yahweh, pagkat ako'y dinirinig. Dinirinig niya ako sa dalangin ko at hibig. Ako'y kanyang dinirinig tuwing ako'y tumatawag. Kaya nga't habang buhay ko'y sa iyo lagi tatawag. Noong ako'y mahuhulog sa bingit ng kamatayan, nadarama ko ang tindi ng takot ko sa libingan. Lipos ako ng pangamba at masidhing katakutan. Sa ganoong kalagayan, si Yahweh ang aking tinawag. At ako ay nagsumamo na iligtas niya ako. Si Yahweh ay napakabuti, mahal niya ang katuwiran. Diyos siyang mahabagin sa awa ay mayaman. Si Yahweh ang nag-iingat sa wala nang sumaklolo. Noong ako'y manganib, iniligtas niya ako. Manalig ka, o puso ko. Kay Yahweh ka magtiwala, pagkat siya ay mabutit, hindi siya nagpapabaya. Manalig ka, o puso ko. Kay Yahweh ka magtiwala, pagkat siya ay mabuti, hindi siya nagpapabaya. Let's pray. Panginoon, salamat. Ikaw ang aming pinupuri at dinadakila. Salamat sa katotohanan ikaw ang Diyos na hindi nagpapabaya. Sa inyong piling kami ay mananatiling ligtas. Father, we always put our hope and trust in you. That you are our sovereign Lord who is in control. May this situation that we are in allow us to cling on you all the more. To do the task that you gave us all the more. Na wala kaming sasayangin oras o Diyos. Na patuloy namin makikita yung mga opportunities na meron kami. Na ibahagi ka sa iba. It's our prayer that we will always be sensitive of your leading. That even at this point, that it's seemingly hard to trace your hand at work, we will trust your heart. May you fulfill your perfect plan in our lives and in our world. We bow down and worship you. Amen. Church, join me. And together, let's sing to our God.
emotion namin ay maging daan upang mandamig kami sa iyo. But instead, we will stand on your promises and seek you all the more in our lives. And we will continue to obey your leading, whatever the cost. Be magnified, O Lord, in our midst and in our church. We continue to praise you. Sada kung 
Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Puri ng Panginoon uh, dahil uh, tayo po ay live ngayon sa ating uh, Facebook page ng uh, Impact Church. We invite you to uh, stay tuned, tune in, and uh, be with us as we go about ng ating worship service ngayon hanggang uh, mga, mga 12 o'clock, no? yun yung uh, uh, span of time natin. And uh, uh, gising na po tayo mga <laughs> ka-impact church. It's uh, time to worship the Lord ngayong araw na to ng uh, Sunday with us. Praise the Lord. Gusto nating uh, batiin muna no, bago tayo pumunta sa salita ng Panginoon ang uh, mga kapatid natin na nagdiriwang ng kanilang kaarawan. Alam ko na hindi kayo makakapunta sa Jollibee or McDonald's to celebrate. But in your own houses and with your own families, you can celebrate. Actually, yung lalabas yung ating mga creative juices kung paano tayo mag-celebrate. So natin pati yung unang-una sa April 7, si E.M. Fababier. Ayan, happy birthday, E.M. At nasa summer. Nasa summer sila. No, yan ang uh, balita natin. Nasa summer sila. Uh, but uh, praise the Lord. Sa po ay nagdiriwang ng birthday ngayon. At kasabay niya na nagdiriwang. Ito, gusto talagang uh, batiin natin. No? Si Carl Dugilio. Carl, happy birthday. Ah, okay, binabati ka namin ngayon ng uh, maligayang kaarawan. Uh, at uh, kung nasaan ka ngayon sa bahay ninyo, eh, naway masaya ka dahil sa pangtaon na nagdagdag sa iyong buhay. Sa April 8 naman, eh, gusto nating matiin din si Vincent Basia, ayan ang kuya ni June. Uh, ay nagdiriwang din ng kanyang kaarawan. Happy, happy birthday sa iyo at sa lahat ng nagdiriwang ng kanilang uh, kaarawan. Happy, happy birthday sa iyo. Praise the Lord. Tayo po ay magpatuloy at tayo ay uh, dadako sa ating series pa rin ng ating uh, uh, Book of Acts at uh, entitled Our theme natin ay Unstoppable. And this morning, I entitled yung ating preaching, ating sermon na Unstoppable Opportunities in Acts chapter 3. So, please join me to um, go sa, sa Acts chapter 3. At tingnan natin yung uh, narrative dito, yung story of the early church and how the Spirit of the Lord moved noong time no, ng mga apostles. Uh, to early church, mga believers in the Lord. Unstoppable opportunities. Wow. And uh, napaka ganda. I like the the background. Pinili ko talaga to. Um, ito nga background na to of a big wave, no? a crashing wave sa, sa ocean. Because I believe that the Spirit of God can be compared to waves in the ocean. Kasi kahit anong gawin mo, you can never stop a wave from smashing or, or uh, no, doing its thing, no? Talagang tuloy ng tuloy. That even in a lockdown time like this, eh, o oh, kasama na yung enhanced community quarantine, there are numerous opportunities that God can present to His people in order for us to follow Him and to fulfill yung mga bagay na yun for the glory of His name. At yung mga yung mga pag-uusapan natin and yung itatakal natin, what are those 
unstoppable opportunities na kahit may lockdown, eh, kaya pa rin kumilos no, ng spirito ng Panginoon. I just remember nung uh, meron kaming uh, summer immersion sa lugar ng Pangasinan. Hindi sila mga tiga Pangasinan dyan. Shout out. <laughs> um, at nagpunta kami sa, ano, sa Lingayan Beach. At nung sa Lingayan Beach, eh, siyempre, after three weeks ng, ano, ng uh, pag-immerse namin, pagod kami, siyempre, gusto namin mag-relax yung tawag namin doon, team time. Punta kami doon sa, sa beach. And, uh, nag-swimming kami. Saan mo mag-swimming? I remember, alagang like, malakas yung, yung ano doon, yung waves doon. No? Malakas yung waves. And, there was one person na nakita ko from afar, na pumunti siya doon sa, sa, malapit lang sa pampang, pero, hinampas siya ng waves, no? At, paghampas sa kanya, tumumba talaga siya. At patayo pa lang siya, humumpas siya naman yung kasunod daw eh. Alos hindi pa siya nakakatayo at tuloy-tuloy, no? And, uh, kaya pala nakita ko doon may marker, bawal pala talaga mag-swimming doon sa lugar na yun. No, bukod sa malakas yung wave, malakas din yung current na hinihila ka, no? Palayo doon sa pampang. No? And, that's how powerful yung dagat, no? At, uh, alam naman natin, maraming mga nalidiskrasya sa uh, mga ganitong klaseng delikadong dagat. Kaya, pinagbabawal nila yung talagang langoy. Kung gusto mo, magbasa ka lang ng bamo doon sa gilid. Or ano. Pero yung talagang uh, splash ng wave, tuloy-tuloy yan. And what's unique about the Spirit of God is that it's like a wave that's ano na, talagang tuloy-tuloy no, yung pagkilos niya. And when we let the Spirit of God work fully in our life and in our church, we have to be ready because it will keep on coming and it will not stop. We have to be ready for it. And the book of Acts, kung talagang book na to, it's very exciting because so it speaks of that, no? It keeps on coming. The story keeps on coming. The, the action is uh, talagang keeps on coming. At nung inisip ko nga, ano natin ito compare dun sa mga brutal na pangyayari sa Nung inaalala natin yung Book of Judges, ito mas matindi pa yung Acts pala. Okay, dun sa Book of Judges, mayroong mga patayan na umatindi. Pero dito sa Book of Acts, if you read it and read it again, you will see that from chapters 1 and 2 pa lang, ano makita natin? There were tongues of fire, there were speaking in tongues, there were miraculous healing, hindi lang isa. Pero maraming nakakalangan, nakakakita, nakakatayo. There were people, crowds, thousands, coming and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, grabe yung aksyon na makikita mo dito kung babasahin mo yung book of Acts. Mas matindi pa no, sa probinsyano. <laughs> Mas matindi pa dun sa aksyon sa probinsyano. Kasi dito, tuloy-tuloy talaga. No? And uh, yan yung mababasa natin dito. Now, uh, let's uh, look at Acts chapter 3. Ito yung ating passage ngayon. Babasahin natin siya ng um, later, by portion. Pero yung buong chapter, yung ating pag-aaralan ngayon, umaga ito. Now, let me read to you yung uh, first two verses. Sabi dito, Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day, he was put beside the temple gate the one called the beautiful gate. So he would beg from the people going into the temple. Now, hinahinit ko yung tatlong bagay dyan. Una, Peter and John went to the temple. Alam natin yan. Kilala natin si Peter at saka si John. Ano pa? Lame man from birth. Alam natin din yan. Yung lame man, sabihin yung tao na hindi nakakalagat. Nakakalagat simula nung pinanganak siya. Pero, Gusto kong i-focus natin yung uh, eyes natin dito sa beautiful gate. Saan nga ba itong beautiful gate? So that magkaroon tayo ng picture dun sa narrative, dun sa nangyari, dun sa storya. No? Now, let me give you an idea. Where is this beautiful gate located? No? Where is this located? Now, ito yung uh, sa picture no, ng temple, ng time ni Jesus, depiction nito. At pagkita nyo dyan, that there are 10 gates actually going inside the temple. And all of them has 
silver and gold elements in it, no? But the most beautiful and extravagant is the the gate in front of the temple. At ito nga yung tinatawag na beautiful gate. Ayan. So, meron tayo dyan na um, in-circle ko dyan yung beautiful gate. And nasa pinakaharap at sentro na gate. The best one was called beautiful gate kasi um, according to uh, scholars, eh, kinover ito, no? ginamitan ito ng Corinthian bronze and copper which creates a beautiful color in time. And it's so beautiful no, that it gives prestige to that gate. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya, beautiful gate. Now, kung uh, anong relationship na ito dun sa begal? Now, kung ako ay mayaman in the time of Jesus, no, nung temple na to, um, kung ako ay mayaman, eh, I would want to pass through the beautiful gate. Because of its prestige, no, uh, and uh, uh, the rich and wealthy would pass through this gate, and the beggars, dahil dito nga dumaraan yung mga mayayamang tao, the beggars will place themselves in front of the beautiful gate. Okay? So may makita natin yung, yung, ano, yung sitwasyon na, o nga, no, ito yung mga pangyayari nung panahon na to. And if I'm a beggar, I will sit down, manghingi ako sa harap ng beautiful gate, mayayaman ay doon nagpa-pass through. Mas marami akong chance na makahingi at mas marami yung pwede ko matanggap kasi the rich, the wealthy, the famous would pass through this beautiful gate. At dito rin nangyari yung, uh, yung healing na ating pag-uusapan din mamaya ni Peter, si John, at yung uh, lame man. Uh, there was, there's another picture of this, no, depicted picture. Ang difference lang nito, yung beautiful gate, meron siyang shade sa harap at may pillars din siya. Doon kayo sa isa, wala. But we don't really know no, kung ano talaga yung pinaka uh, itsura niya, but it's only a uh, depiction na pwede or posible na itsura niya. Ang uh, kailangan natin nagtandaan dito, it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Pag 3 o'clock, eh, mainit pa niya. Ang so, yung punta kami ni KR sa Israel, eh, mainit doon. No? Pagkahapon, mainit. Uh, kaya, palagi kang naka, naka-wear ng shades mo. No? O kaya meron kang uh, payong no? na kailangan. So, um, yung mga nakaupo doon, beggars, at bakit pinapayagin yung beggars doon? Kasi, yung mga Hudyo, meron silang tinatawag na three pillars of faith. Yung three, three pillars of faith nila ay one is yung Torah. No? Is yung uh, scripture. Kailangan nila aralin yun. No? Sa life nila. Pangalawa is yung worship and prayer. They need to worship God, of course, and pray to God. At yung pangatlo ay yung charity. And charity is uh, way in ang life nila because God has always focused on people who don't get noticed. Hindi napapansin. At sino yung mga tao to? Sila yung mga poor, sila yung mga needy, the widows, the orphans, and the disabled. And we read from time to time, when we read the Bible, we see na, okay, may portion din na iwanan niyo para sa mga widows. Yan na nasa law yan ni God. Because, gusto niya bigyan ng uh, uh, ng chance ng ng, ng uh, blessing din itong mga nangangailangan. That's why when the Jews during Passover will pass through, talaga nagbibigay sila because it's part of their pillar, Torah, worship and charity or giving. In short, it was part of their religious nature to give as uh, uh, kaya uh, nabibless din no? na tulungan din yung mga beggars yung kahit konti na natutulungan sila. Now, itong temple na to, no, uh, is the temple dun sa buong temple mount, is the portion of it lang. But, ang natira dun sa pinaka-wall niya that's closest to the temple 
is what we call the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. At yun, makita natin dyan yung sa left upper, yung uh, Dome of the Rock, no? na halos na dun sa, uh, sa pwesto rin nung temple in time ng mga disciples. At gusto natin ipakita, gusto kong ipakita sa inyo, yung nasaan ba yung Western Wall na yan na uh, uh, ngayon, talaga pinupuntahan ng mga hudyo. Diyan sila nang nalangin. Diyan din ginagawa yung, uh, yung ibang mga uh, rituals nila. Now, the western wall is here. Yan. Nandito yung wailing wall. Western wall. Kaya kanina nakita natin sa upper left corner yung dome of the rock. But the whole no, temple mount. Yan. At dati nakasituate dito yung temple. Yan. Dito sa portion na yan. At dyan nagpupunta yung mga uh, Ujo, no? Uh, para mag-worship kay God. And, uh, uh, na-meet ko sa, ano, sa, sa Israel, nung pumunta ako, si Piolo, nung dyan siya na yan. Uh, Nagpa-picture siya sa akin. Kaya, kinitsura. <laughs> <laughs> ako po yan. No? I had a chance to, uh, to take a picture. Kinitsura na ako ni Kaya dyan sa Western Wall at ganyan karami yung tao nung pumunta kami. And, uh, of course, sama ko yung team no, namin. Uh, Nagpa-picture din kami dyan sa waiting wall. Nakita nyo. Kailangan merong nakalagay sa kipa, kipa sa ulo mo. No? Because it's uh, it's a holy place no, for the Jews. Now, I also had a chance to pray no, dun sa waiting wall, or western wall, to the Lord. I spent time praying intently to God. Habang suot-suot ko yung Lebron James ko na. Bawa, hindi, wala namang ano, wala namang instruction kung ano yung suot mo na, na sapatos. Pero pwede ka pumunta basta meron kang kipa na sa ulo mo. And you wash your hands no, before you go to the wall. Meron portion doon yung pang lalaki at may portion din yung pang babae. Okay? And uh, we also had a chance to go inside the... Go on top on top ng pataas eh. So, yung yung temple mount. Temple mount. So, ito yung ano, yung uh, dome of the rock. No? Ito yung dome of the rock na yun. Ayan, no? Kitang-kita nyo. May nakuha nyo naman na gawa ko dyan. Okay. Uh, sa dome of the rock. And uh, dome of the rock. Nasaan ulit yun? Nandun, no? Sa side na yun. Sa left ng, uh, ng western wall. Ah, uh, now, which uh, natin. But during a Passover celebration, eh, dumarami yung tao. Which is uh, about this time. About this time, no? Uh, sa mga panahon ngayon, ganyan karami ang mga tao. Nag-gather sila, no? Uh, for the feast, Passover. At in the time of Jesus, According to the noted scholar Joachim Jeremiah, Jerusalem had a population back then of about 20 30,000. But at Passover, one of the three main festivals, eh, ito ay dumarami ng 150,000 sa buong city no, ng Jerusalem. And uh, very uh, important ito when we study the book of Acts kasi malalaman mo na marami talagang tao na pumupunta si Jerusalem at that time. No? Maraming pumupunta. At maraming uh, opportunity ngayon yung mga disciples to share who Jesus Christ is. Now, let me show you a video para mas maging vivid sa atin kasi ako medyo visual ako eh. So, let's uh, have a vivid uh, uh, scene para sa ating story. Here it goes.
ng Psalms, ano? Sige, post muna natin. Try natin ng may Psalms. Sige, post. Okay. Check natin. Bakit walang Psalms? Ayan, ayan na. Alright. Try this again. Marinig natin din yung, ano, yung conversation nila. Importante yung conversation nila. Dito sa ano. to give alms? Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this part is important. Um, because it says in uh, verse 1, Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple, no, at the night hour, the hour of prayer. Okay, it's just an introduction to what is going to happen. Pero sabi ko, parang hindi yata. And when observing what Peter and John did, sabi ko, wait. There was an opportunity that they grasped or they grabbed in time na to. They could have stayed in the upper room kasi they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were moving and they were 
were blessed because the Spirit of the Lord was using them to minister. Pero look at what they did. Instead of staying and saying, okay, walang problema. Ano naman eh, feel naman ako ng Holy Spirit. Still, they grabbed the opportunity to go to the temple and pray to God with His people. They took that opportunity to meet God even if they were already filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Hindi nila in-skip yung chance na mag-prayer meeting, mag-meet in prayer dun sa temple to meet God together with other believers. Because sometimes it's easy to get caught with the idea na okay lang, nakapag-church na, okay na ako the whole week. No? We have, when we have the opportunity to meet God, let's meet the Lord. One thing I learned here is that I want to share with you that being filled with the Holy Spirit moves people to draw closer and closer to the Lord. If you say that the Holy Spirit is working in your life, then it should draw you closer to God and you want God more. You want to meet other people more in prayer, in fellowship, and you want to go to church more because you are drawn with the presence of God in your life. That's why this opportunity, I named it, Meet God Whenever You Can. Whenever you have the opportunity, meet God. Because our spiritual enfoldment takes evidence in our desire for more and more and more of Him. Do you want to be unstoppable? Yun yung steam natin ngayon, ano yun? Ngayong months, ngayong weeks natin kinitig. Do you want to be unstoppable? Pwede yung mga tanongin yung katabi mo? Katabi mo sa bahay o katabi mo ngayon? Do you want to be unstoppable? Sa basketball, meron kami tinatawag, kung pag na, na, nanood kayo ng basketball, hindi ka lang ng basketball, meron tinatawag ng mga player na MVP caliber player. At sila yung mga tinatawag natin, unstoppable guys. No na, kapag uh, hawak nila yung bola, kaya-kaya nilang mag-cross over, pumunta sa ring at umiscore anytime they want. Yan yung mga likes of Stephen Curry, Brown James, Damian Lillard, talagang hindi mo mabipigilan ang mga James Harden, yung pigilan, they are unstoppable in, in terms of battle. Kaya kailangan mo silang i-double team para ma-stop, pero minsan nakagawa pa rin sila ng play. They are unstoppable guys, they can contribute to the team in many ways. So the question is, do you want to be unstoppable for the Lord? Do you have that desire or a growing desire to have more and more of Jesus in your life and that God will use you in a mighty way that nothing, no one can stop you when the Spirit enables you to move and share in the gospel and reach more for the Lord? Let God's Spirit move in you. The next scene Ibabasahin natin. Sabi dito, Peter and John looked at him. Itong lame man, no? Tinignan nila. And Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Ayun sabi ni Peter. Sabi ni John. Now, looking at this situation ngayon, ano ba yung binigay ni Peter dito sa layman na to? Wala sila. Sabi niya, wala akong silver, wala rin akong gold. And it's very contradicting, of course, because uh, in the temple, it's made of, the gates are made of silver and gold while the beggars are there having nothing. Now, sabi ni, ni Peter, I don't have silver and gold to give you. Ano ba yung meron siya? They have Jesus in their life. They have salvation. They have the Holy Spirit. And they have faith. That's why there was healing. Healing yung binigay. No, ni Peter sa kanya. There was, I think, physical healing. 
and also spiritual healing. If you, kapag tinapos mo yung story na to, eh, itong lema na to, sumunod na kila Peter and John kung saan man sila pumunta. No? And they, he also praised and worshipped God. Did you notice yung exclamation point dito sa huli natin? Get up and walk exclamation point. Hindi sinabi ni Peter, sige nga, try mo na, tumayo ka, try mo. Hindi sinabi. Ang sabi niya, tumayo ka at maglakad ka. Ibang klase nito si Peter. No? Sabi niya, get up and walk. Kung ako yung layman, masipin ko, sino ba ito si Peter? Hindi <laughs> nga ako nakakalakad eh. Hindi nga ako nakakatayo since birth. Tapos gusto mo tumayo ako, maglakad ako. Kaya, ano niya si story? Hindi talaga siya tumayo. Tumayo ba siya mag-isa? Hindi. No, nandun lang siya. He did not move because it was impossible in his mind to move kasi nga, lame siya from birth. Simula nung pinanganak siya, hindi na siya, hindi niya kaya tumayo, hindi niya kaya maglakan. So, ano ginawa ni Peter? What happened? Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up. Tinayo. Hinawa ka ni Peter at tinayo. Siguro sabi ni Peter, sige, ayaw mo ako to. Papakita ko sa'yo. <laughs> tinayo niya. And he helped him up. No, tinulungan niya makatayo itong lalaki. And what happened next? Pagtayo ba? Tumukbo agad siya? No? Para sa Sonic. <laughs> uh, mga anak pa sa pagbrita si Sonic. <laughs> Mabilis! Hindi. No, I, I believe that the story would be Peter helping him up to tulungan niya tumayo. At parang isang bata na, na well, first time niya eh. He had to figure out kung paano gumag gum uh, gumagana yung kanyang paa at saka yung binti, yung hita niya. Yes, uh, in the scripture, it says here, immediately, sa verse 7, his feet and his ankles were strengthened. Tumibay. Siguro nagkaroon ng, ng, uh, ng muscles, ng laman, no? Na, na strengthen yung, yung muscles no? na weak. And like a child, no? A small child na nag-aral na maglakad, parang zombie na pakaliwa ka na yung lakad. No? Ganun din siya at first. Pero when he started figuring it out, he was able to walk by himself. And afterwards, he was already, no? walking faster and maybe running and sabi he was leaping already because of joy and there was a joy that uh, was brought to him because of the healing that he had and he was praising God for this miracle na uh, nagkaroon siya o natanggap niya and uh, with this I already uh, again noticed another opportunity na ginawa ni Peter sa kanila. Ano yung opportunity na yun? Kanina, opportunity um, to meet God. No? Ngayon naman, opportunity to discern the Spirit on how to help others. Opportunity to help. How to help. Discernment of the Spirit on how to help others. Bakit? You see, the man did not ask for healing. He asked for money. Unlike the other um, healing accounts ni Jesus Christ na sabi ng blind man, Jesus, ikaw ba yan? Pagaling mo ko, tulungan mo ko. But this man was a regular lame man sa beautiful gate asking for money, asking for arms. Kanina sa video, sabi niya, arms, arms, paying arms. He did not ask for healing but with the opportunity given to Peter and John and through the Spirit of God in them, the lame man was healed and was given more than what he expected. He expected silver. He expected gold. He expected a little bit of coin or money. No, no, barya. Kasi hindi naman bibigay lang million yung mga mayayaman. So, di ba? Tayo pag nagbigay, magkano tayo magbigay dun sa mga sa mga lumalapit sa sakit at kumakato. Magkano? Sa mga naumulog, magkano yung view? Siyempre, yung, yung change mo, yung barya, yung kadalasan binibigay mo. But once this man received 
ay hindi barya-barya. He received more than what he expected. He was healed from his disability. Peter did not have anything to give. At sometimes, sa buhay natin, we are caught up also in a situation na hindi natin kaya, kaya ibigay yung pangailangan ng isang tao, ng isang kapatid natin. For example, merong sakit, o kaya lost of a loved one, o kaya may cancer, sometimes you're caught up. Ano ba may tutulong ko sa taong to? Ano ba may bibigay kong tulong sa kanya kung meron siyang uh, terminal illness, kung meron siyang heartbreak, meron siyang loss of love one? Ano yung pwede kong may bigay? But, ang alam natin din sa sitwasyon na to, the only powerful thing that Peter and si John gave to this man was Jesus himself. And sometimes, ganun din tayo. May mga tao na humihingi na tulong sa atin, na hindi natin kaya ibigay yung pangailangan nila. But what we can give is Jesus Himself. Because God works in unexpected ways and His Spirit in us gives us the opportunity to show compassion to others. What should we do? Ask the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Discern in the Spirit. And He will teach you what to do or what to say in a specific situation. Third scene, let me read from verse 9. It says, All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar that they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. At ito na yung kasunod sa story natin. Okay, napagaling na to. He was able to enter, nakita natin sa video kanina, the temple na nandun lang siya sa labas all his life now. He was able to enter and worship and praise God. And after the prayer, they went out to the temple itself and went to uh, the Solomon's Colonnade. Sa naman itong Solomon's Colonnade, it's only um, jail, no? Nung malapit lang siya, dun sa, sa gilid siya, kasi nga, yun yung sabi sa, sa verse is, yung shaded part, no? Hindi siya mainit, o hindi sila kailangan tumayo sa sa initan. May part doon na yung katawag natin Solomon's Colonnade na shaded area. Ito yung itsura niya. No? So, nandito yung temple sa side na to, nandun lang siya sa gilid. And it, it was the, the uh, portion na nag-gather yung mga tao katapos sila pumasok ng temple. Uh, usually, dun sila nag-usap, teaching happens. Jesus usually teaches no, here sa Solomon's Colony. Pag nakita nyo, yun, medyo malawak siya. Mahaba. At maraming tao ang pwedeng uh, uh, mag-stay dito. So, teaching happens. No? Especially with si Jesus di dyan siya nagtuturo kasi hindi naman nila gagawin sa inside natin mo dito yan ginagawa and in between ito gentile ano yung uh, area yan no? pwede yung mga gentiles din dyan sa temple sa loob lang ng temple hindi so that is Solomon's colonnade um, ngayon dito na nagpunta si Peter at saka si John at <laughs> ang description dito the man was holding tightly to Peter and John no? Naka, nakahawak talaga no? siya kay, kay Peter at ka, kay, kay John no? um, because he was amazed by yung kanyang uh, healing at alam niya ibang klase itong mga taong ito you see God works in uh, in miracles for people to know that he is God the miracle was not for Peter and John para maging sikat sila the miracle was not only for that lame person para lang gumigawa ang buhay niya. It's for people to know that there is a powerful God that amidst an uh, impossible situation sa buhay niya that all his life he was only begging for money. It could change in an instant when you believe in God. What do you think is the purpose of the miracle? To give hope to the hopeless. 
to address a need only God can give. To test the faith of the apostles, maybe. Dahil, Peter and John, kung hindi mangyari yung miracle, maraming tao nakakita sa kanila doon. And to give glory to God and have an opportunity to to share the gospel. You see, bago yun, it was an opportunity actually to draw an audience or a crowd in order to share Jesus. Ang problema sa ating minsan, no, when we have that desire to share Jesus, we cannot draw people. No, hindi tayo mga draw ng people. Sino ba yung masasira natin? Gusto natin mag-share, pero sino ba yung masasira natin? No? So, this was an opportunity na kin-create or na create through the Spirit, the leading of the Spirit, kay Peter Saradan, so that people will draw in and listen to the Word of God. Kaya nga, we must always ask for the Spirit of for wisdom in those opportunities. Natutuwa ako kasi meron tayong mga kabatiran sa Panginoon, no? and even when you look at the news, ano mong ginagawa nila during quarantine? Okay? Nag-grocery sila. At yung iba, they are bumibili ng bigas na mas marami sa pangangailangan nila because they want to give to others. And uh, isang kapatid natin, preserved kasi may mga bigas na na binalot at uh, pinamigay sa kapitbahay. You see, those are opportunities of drawing people. No, drawing people, getting people's attention. And na natutulungan sila, may bless, pero it's an opportunity also that in time, you can share Jesus Christ kasi may opportunity. Kaya nga, hindi porkit nasa quarantine tayo, eh wala opportunity to share. Meron. Because every time na nangyayari yun, di ba, meron, okay, uh, bigyan kita ng ano, magtatanong sila, uy, ang bait mo naman, no? saan ba galing to, bakit mo ginagawa to? And those are opportunities already of a conversation. Pwede mo lagyan nga ng gift card yung pinamimigay mo. No? Pwede mo lagyan ng gift card. There are endless ways, opportunities, so that we can bring Jesus closer to people who are around us. And there are miracles happening around us because of God's work that we must recognize it and direct our praise to God only. Next is this. No? Ito na yung, nandiyan na yung mga tao. No? Kasi na, Saan ba yung mano? Hindi makalakad dati. O, bakit nakakalakad na? Nakakatalo na, nakakatakbo na. No? Kaya na, curious sila, at yung mga tao, they, they run. No? Ang ganda ng uh, depiction dito, sa sinabi dito sa verse, um, uh, verse 10. And they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement of what happened to him. No? In one uh, uh, translation, it says there, nagkagulo yung mga tao dahil nga there was a impossible thing happened. It, it's a miracle happened. Nagkakwentuhan sila, Uy, may alam mo ba yung ano? Kanina nung nanakad doon. Hindi nakakalakad, hindi nakakalakad, ha? Saan mo saan nakita yun? Sino yung sabi sa'yo? Andun sila ngayon sa Solomon Colonnade. Tara, puntahan natin. O pinuntahan ngayon nila. Punta sila doon, nakita nila si Peter siya kasi dyan. At yung lame man, dati, na nakakalakad na, andun, nasa, ah, at nasa labay sa braso ni, ano, ni Peter. Kasi marahin yung iba, naniniwala, yung iba hindi. O, ikaw, siguro hindi ka, ano, no, na, nakakalakad ka talaga eh. Niluloko mo lang kami. Hindi. Nakalakad talaga ako. Hindi talaga ako nakalakad. Pero ngayon nakalakad ako. Dahil kay Peter sa kaya mo. And it was an opportunity now for Peter to address the crowd. And sabi niya, People of Israel, he said, this is so sur- What is so surprising about this? Bakit kayo nagugulat? At bakit kayo nakatitig sa amin? Why do you stare at us though we made this man walk by our own power or godliness? Masabi niya, hindi kami nagpagalit sa tao ito. Sino? And when you um, um, read 
through, sabi niya nun, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of, us, God of our fathers, has glorified His servant, Jesus. It was Jesus. At sinayin mo ng Panginoon. Yung dinis-own ninyo, yung pinapako niyo sa krus, yung sabi niyo, sige, si Barabas na lang pakawalan, at siya yung i-crucify. Siya yung nagpagaling dito sa lima na to. Siya yung righteous one na minurder ninyo. Marami si Peter. No? But, sabi niya, He was the one whom God raised from the dead. And He was the one, and in His name, Jesus strengthened this man you see now, walking. And the faith which comes from through Him has given Him the perfect help in the presence of you all. Nagulat siya ng lahat. Si Jesus pala, ang nagpagaling. Because people, you see, people can reject the God who can help make impossible things possible for men. People can reject God. And when we see the impossible sometimes, we reject God's ability to work. Because losing hope in life, mawala ka ng pag-asa sa buhay mo, it's like saying na walang Diyos. Because God is the God of hope. He is the God of life. He is the one who gives hope to men. Because He already had this promise to men of what they can experience, what they can receive, the blessings that they can receive because of the death of Jesus Christ. Kaya wala tayong orason na mawala ng pag-asa, na mawala ng hope. Because it's like saying, wala na akong tiwala sa Diyos. Wala na akong pag-asa. Because it is God who gives hope to us. Peter and John gave the opportunity to share this to the Jews who were there in Solomon's colony. You see, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. And sabi ni Desmond, Dalawa, dalawa, two, two. Hope is the little voice in you that uh, that you hear whisper, maybe, when it seems the entire world is shouting, no. And hope is an acronym of the word, hold on, thing ends. Minsan napupunta tayo sa sitwasyon sa buhay natin. At it's very painful. Hindi natin maintindihan kung bakit gano'n na lang ang naranasan nating thing sa life. But you know what? Huwag natin i-disregard yung opportunity na kumilos ang Diyos sa buhay natin. Because katulad ng acronym na to, it says, Hold on, pain. See number five, and this is the last one that I'm going to share with you this morning. One of the things that I read here from Peter was in verse 19. He said, Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord and He will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. You see, Jesus was God's promise to man as a blessing for them to turn from their wicked ways. So, misa niisip natin na, okay, si God, sinenya si Jesus Christ to die on the cross, yes. And kasama don, it moves us. Knowing Jesus Christ moves us into. Uh, situation na sinasabi niya, ito yung paraan para um, tumalikod ka 
mula sa mali kasi pinadala ko na ang katotohanan at ang kabutihan sa mundo. Kaya um, you have to um, know and believe that Jesus Christ is the one who will save you from your wicked ways. Knowing Him will change you. Knowing Him, uh, kaya ang kailangan natin gawin, yung opportunity number five is, let God change you. Let Jesus take over you. God introduces Himself to people because He wants to change people for the good. He just wants to take over people so that they can live an abundant life with God. You see, Jesus is God's blessing for mankind so that we can cross from wickedness to holiness. There was no chance for man alone to cross over from wickedness to holiness only through the death the resurrection of Jesus that brought us out from eternal punishment. Let God change you. Let Jesus take over you. Sabi ni Peter, repent of your sins and turn to God. In conclusion, let me say, uh, sabi dito, sa story natin, to layman, ano matututunan natin? Ano gusto natin uh, makita dito sa sitwasyon ng, ng layman? What does it tell us? You see, with Peter and John going to the temple, saying this layman, God gives us unstoppable opportunities to help others. Every day. Every day. You just need to look around you and see, Oy, may opportunity pala ako no? to serve God. May opportunity pala ako pagpunta ako sa kapitbahay ko o kaya pag-chinat ko yung kaibigan ko o kaya pag nag-Zoom meeting kami o nag-Facebook kami. I have an opportunity to serve God and help others. And this man was a testimony no, of it. And humingi siya ng something and Peter did not give him anything. He did not give coins. But he offered more. Kapatid ko nakikinig ka ngayon, Ang naisabihin ng Diyos ay hindi bariya yung ibibigay sa iyo ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Hindi yung mga kakarampot na pangailangan mo lang na magsusustain lang sa iyo for a time. Hindi bariya ang ibibigay ng Panginoon kapag lumapit ka sa Kanya para magkaroon ka lang ng kakarampot. Gusto ng Diyos na maranasan mo Maranasan mo siya ng buong buo at maranasan mo ng buong buo yung kanyang pagpapalak. Gusto ng Diyos na baguhin ka at baguhin ang sitwasyon na naroon ka. Baguhin ang buhay mo. Ang kailangan mo lang ay magtiwala sa Kanya. This is what I think the story is all about. Sometimes we make things na, na we ask God for little things sa buhay natin. But we have never asked God to really change no, yung buhay natin ng buong buo and fully depend and surrender to Him. Because if we do that, we will experience yung kabungan ng pagpapala ng Panginoon. Katulad na itong tao ko. Yung layman na um, pinagaling. And uh, ako na, nung uh, ako ay high school student pa lang, um, I was already, of course, born in a Christian family. Then, in a sanayan ko, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ early high school. Pero nung, as a Christian, nahiya talaga ako mag-share ng, ng gospel sa, ano, sa, mga, sa mga classmates ko. 
but it dawned to me one time kung gano'n ka importante yung share ng gospel and yung opportunity na, na i-take mo na i-share yung gospel. Because one of our schoolmates na close sa amin, no? close sa amin yung girl, met an accident through, so a bike accident. Nag-bike lang siya, na wala ng preno, tapos pababa siya, tapos she hit uh, an accident, a wall, no? and uh, talaga hindi kinaya nung, ano, nung nasa hospital siya. And sabi namin, there were hard questions that we face. Bakit siya? No? Bakit ngayon pa? And minsan dating tayo dun sa opportunity, sa, sa pagtatanong na, bakit kasi, no? na-miss ko yung chance. Ngayon pa na wala na siya. Hindi natin naisip. Sayang. <laughs> Sinira mo siya ng last. That's why I want to leave to you three things. No? na pwede natin gawin. Number one, know what to share about Jesus. Sometimes, gusto natin may desire lang tayo. Pero kailangan i-prepare natin yung sarili natin. Ano ba yung ano, i-share ko kay Jesus, tungkol kay Jesus? Ano ba yung mga importante ano, mga bagay yung dapat kong banggitin sa mga tao kapag sinishare ko si Jesus? Pangalawa, look for opportunities to share Jesus. Ibig sabihin, dapat active ka. Ibig sabihin, ah, uh, Nasa kayo mo palagi, uy, ito opportunity ito ah. Uy, ito opportunity ito ah. Uy, ito na. Magpupunta sa amin ito mga tao ito ah. Opportunity ito to share Jesus. And number three, think about how to share Jesus. Ibig sabihin, in your mind, you're already thinking, sino ba yung mga tao nyo, ano ba yung mga dapat mong gawin. And this will, uh, if this get, uh, become your nature, mas kikilos ang banal na espiritu sa buhay mo in so many ways na hindi mo ma-imagine. Kaya nga yung title ng, ng ating series is Unstoppable. Because when you let God and you let yourself be prepared in any situation that the Spirit can use you, ah, God can really use you. Gusto yung sabihin ko yung ending ng story na to? Hinuli si Peter sa si John sa chapter 4. But in the end, people, 5,000, believe in Jesus. Wow! Sabi niyo, wow. Wow. Wow talaga. <laughs> and you imagine 5,000 people believing in Jesus and giving up their lives to Him because of the opportunity na hindi nila pinalampas. Si Peter, sabi si God, yung opportunity na tumulong dun sa layman. Ano yung resulta? 5,000. Hindi lang isa. Actually, it's not really for the layman itself. Yung miracle. It's for the Jews who were there and maybe some Gentiles who were there. May nakarinig nung sinabi, nung preaching ni Peter. That is why um, let's put it into yung pagdamit sa atin ng, ng spirit. Let me end with this story of a um, wala ko makuha na good picture. Uh, there was a dark skinny little boy in Sunday school sa isang Baptist church at nag Sunday school siya for three years. He was um, uh, he was there no, sa isang Baptist church, Sunday school attending nga siya. But when he grew older and became 24 years old, he is the person who shot and killed Senator Robert Kennedy in the United States. Ang pangalan niya ay Sirhan. Sirhan. And Mini said, someone missed this boy when he was in Sunday school. Maybe things changed when someone shared the gospel intently to him and helped him grow, to, grow, uh, help him grow uh, in the knowledge of Jesus more and more. See, three years in church, what happened 
it was a tragedy. He became a murderer of a senator nung siya ay 24 years old. Huwag po natin palabasin ng opportunity. Even little boys inside Sunday school, malaking bagay. Teenagers sa ating student center, malaking bagay. Adults, young professionals in the church, malaking bagay. Do you want to be unstoppable? Let the Spirit of God move through you. Prepare your heart and your mind always to be used by God in every opportunity that you have. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you today. We ask, Lord God, that you forgive us. I say sometimes we are afraid to grab opportunities that come our way para ipakilala ka namin sa mga tao. And it's a, you, you say in your word na, na if we are ashamed of the gospel, then you will be ashamed with us when we go to heaven. Ayaw namin mangyari yun, Panginoon. That is why give us the courage, the boldness, Lord God, and that in every opportunity that come our way, that we are intently thinking about these opportunities and letting the Holy Spirit work in us, we will not fear, we will not doubt, and we will not let you down, and we will not oppress the Spirit, but, but move like a wave that cannot be stopped. So that more and more people, like Peter and John, 5,000 people hearing your gospel and believing in you. There is nothing impossible for you, Panginoon, because you have said in your word, you will do greater things. And that's why this book of Acts is really challenging us right now as a church. Because it moves us not to sit down in the pews or in the chairs. It forces us not to be in our comfort zone, but it pushes us outward to go into the world where we will seize every opportunity, Lord, so that your name will be proclaimed. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, as individuals and as a church, so that the wave of the Spirit will move in us. We praise you, O God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point, we will uh, do together yung ating uh, Holy Communion. So if you are at home, gather your family. If you are the uh, spiritual leader of uh, your home, eh, uh, pwede nyo pong uh, gagawin itong part ng leader. No? Pag may leader ka part dyan, okay, pwede mo salita ako. Pwede nyo rin hintayin yung signal ko. But if you are doing this on another time together, eh, pwede, pwede nyo pong sunan. No? Sinend po namin ito sa, uh, sa, sa Impact uh, Family Group natin na, uh, na copy. So you can do this together as a family. Kung kayo naman po ay single o mag-isa lang, no? uh, you can join us now or you can do it also no? uh, by just following yung ating uh, ginawa dyan. So, uh, what you need is, uh, yun lang po yung communion elements natin. No, you need your communion elements, the, the bread and the cup, para um, i-administer po ito uh, together. So, uh, let's uh, open ko lang ito. And uh, let me uh, start by uh, yung ating unang statement dito uh, with the leader. Let me read, we come and gather in the table of Holy Communion in order to remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. He died on the cross to pay the penalty of our sins and through his death set us free and give us eternal life.
our restored relationship with God gives us the privilege to commune with Him and praise Him for all the good things He has done. Let us pray. Lord, prepare our hearts and minds. May you forgive us from our iniquities, our sins, our trespasses. Trespasses sa iyo, Panginoon, na nagawa namin laban sa iyo. We admit, Lord, our mistakes. We are grieved also because we know that we are offending you. Be not Jews. We know that we should live in holiness so that we can please you, Panginoon. The things that we do, we say, we think. So, Lord, bless us and prepare us. Bless these elements that we have in front of us. And may you be glorified as we commune together. In Jesus' name, amen. We will do a responsive reading. So, uh, the leader will have his part to lead. At pero din mga part ng uh, people to um, read as well as um, answer no, dun sa uh, salitan po itong gagawin natin. So let me start. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He, will not, he who watches you over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber or The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. And the Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forever. Already did the prayer of confession. Let's uh, read. Let me read you the scripture, Colossians 1, 16 to 20. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whenever thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to him to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace. Through his blood shed on the cross. Remember, we are already in peace with God because of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we ask you that you will bless and pour into this bread and this cup everything of yourself. We see in your Son, Jesus, as our eternal sustenance. Every word you speak is summed up in him and spoken to the deepest part of the human experience by the Holy Spirit. Now distribute the elements to your family members and people who are there with you worshiping with us. Let's hold the bread together. For I receive from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake together the bread. the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake together. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for taking the pain, mm -hmm. the suffering for us. Lord, it is our desire that we give importance to what you have done for us. Because you have died for the sake of men and you have died for the sake of the gospel. May it drives us. May it move us like the wave so that your name will be proclaimed. We honor you for who you are in our life. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for making us holy by one in your sight. And thank you for your blood that has cleansed us, changed us, your spirit that renews us and uh, uh, refines us to become the Christian that you desire us to be. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me as we sing our closing song.
isang mapagpalang linggo po sa ating lahat. Uh, before we end, let me give you an uh, announcement. And uh, of course, in closing prayer and benediction natin. Uh, because uh, ngayon pong dating na uh, lingkong ito ay Holy Week. No? Holy Week. Holy Week na po. And di lang natin ramdam dahil nasa loob tayo ng mga bahay natin. But <laughs> it's already Holy Week. And uh, we decided that of course as a church we will uh, um, focus more of course ng ating uh, uh, time ng uh, ating ginagawa and uh, uh, mga devotion, mga ano natin to to the Lord, of course. Kaya uh, magpapadala po ang uh, Impact Church ng papadala uh, ang Impact Church ng mga uh, devotionals mga guides para sundan natin at uh, para po ay may magamit tayo during this time morning and I think evening uh, devotions natin. And uh, we want you to be updated with that and follow that because it will help us a lot. No? At ganoon din po, meron din po mga prayer and fasting na pinost tayo sa, sa impact group uh, na ganoon po sa Kamakop. No? The Kam Kamakop is also um, sending itong mga uh, guide sa atin na pwede natin i-follow. 7pm. No? Meron tayo sabay-sabay na panalangin po yan sabay-sabay na panalangin. So, uh, huwag po natin palampasin. Uh, tayo po ay uh, ilagay na natin sa ating mga alarm uh, habang po tayo ay nasa bahay. Ano po may mga schedule sa kayo. But you can uh, uh, reserve that schedule para sa ating prayer and fasting. Ngayon po ay manalangin sama-sama sa ating Panginoon. Panginoon, kami po ay nagsusumamo. Kami ay lumalapit sa iyo, O Diyos. Unang-una, kami po ay naniniwala na ikaw ang Diyos na may hawak ng langit at lupa at nagalikha sa lahat, Panginoon, at walang imposible sa iyo. Kami po ay dumudulo, Panginoon. Taposin mo na po ang problema ng pandemic na ito sa buong mundo. Bigyan mo po ng katalinuhan ang mga taong nasa posisyon at uh, nasa siyensya upang uh, ang makagawa ng solusyon. At nawa ang mga tao ay uh, kumulong upang uh, uh, maka uh, maging bahagi ng solusyon para sa aming uh, tinakaharap na ito. Panginoon, tapusin mo na po ang uh, COVID-19 na uh, sakit na ito sa amin. And uh, with your power, Lord, and with your spirit, in Jesus' name, we claim, Lord God, we claim for this to end, Panginoon, sa lalong madaling panahon. Tulungan mo po kami and may you sustain, Panginoon, our brothers and sisters here in our nation, no, to uh, kanilang araw-araw ng pangailangan na alam ko may admit ang, uh, ang aming uh, LGUs, ang aming gobyerno, but alam ko mas marami pa doon ang pangailangan. We also pray for our Impact Church members na mayroong needs, Panginoon, na mapuibot silang uh, mahiyang uh, magsabi ng kanilang pangailangan at nandito ang church upang tumulong sa kanila. At nawa yung mga natulungan, Panginoon, ay uh, maging uh, kalikalagalakan sa kanila. Ang uh, minabot na katulong ng uh, kahit paano sa kanila no, para matulungan yung kanilang sitwasyon. Alam namin na wala, maraming walang trabaho, maraming uh, uh, walang income ngayon na pumapasok and lahat ng uh, gastusin ay palabas, Panginoon. Lalo-lalo na ilayo mo ang aming uh, mga kapatiran sa anumang uh, uh, paghawa ng sakit na ito. Uh, ilayo mo kami, Panginoon, no? ay wala po magkaroon ng uh, sakit, Panginoon, sa amin. At uh, dalangin namin na uh, uh, patuloy kang uh, uh, mamuna no? sa mga uh, tatay, mga nangunguna sa tahanan upang maging uh, masaya pa rin ang, uh, ang aming quarantine period, maging uh, magalak pa rin na magkakasama kami sa loob ng aming mga tahanan. Panginoon, meron po kami mga kapatiran na, na may sakit. Uh, Pagganin mo po sila. Dinadalangin po namin ngayon um, si uh, 
Ma'am Darlene Castañas na nagkaroon ng stroke, Panginoon. At uh, nagkaroon ng small uh, clot no, sa kanyang uh, uh, brain, Panginoon. And, uh, siya po ay nasa Cavite ngayon. Panginoon, may you visit her with your mighty presence and with your angels. Dalangin namin na sa kanya na nasa ICU ngayon, na puno ng mga pasyente ng COVID, mabigyan pa rin siya ng atensyon, Panginoon, at matugunan yung kanyang pangailangan due to the stroke that she had, Panginoon. May the treatment, may the doctors be used, Panginoon, the medicines, to heal her in Jesus' name. Ito po ay kapatid ng aming pastor, Pastor June Ardina. And, uh, Dalangin namin na ikaw ang at ang iyong pabor, Panginoon, ay sumakan niya at siya ay makaranas, Panginoon, ng kagalingan na nanggagaling sa iyo. Malahin may mga mga kapatiran din na, na nakakaranas ng karamdaman. Patuloy mo silang pagalingin, Panginoon. Ikaw ang magbigay aliw sa kanila at ng pag-asa na sa iyo kami ay makakaasa. Kaya, Panginoon, ngayong uh, uh, umangang ito, kami po ay uh, uh, naghihintay ng iyong pagpapala. Kami po ay uh, uh, nararasa namin, Panginoong Diyos, ang iyong kabutihan. Na why uh, you may release us, Lord God, with the blessings that come from you in you alone. So, the Lord, our God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, may He bless you and keep you. May His make His sh face shine upon you and give you peace, give you hope from now and forevermore. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ligayang araw, mga kapatid, purihin ang ating Panginoon.